So we have another black dart, black mardemer formation here, and the crux of this um, video is more or less going to be what happens when black turns down the extra pawn we offer him um, as a kind of f3 gambit in the opening against something that would resemble either a French or a Caro can. And black can get a perfectly good game with this, and get equality, but um, this is more an example of how to beat people who are rated 2200 and up. And it has to do with the fundamentals of chess. Now, this really entered into it only from the standpoint that Black felt obligated to turn it down, and we never did get the F-file uh, really open the way we wanted. And we wanted to create a, a game that had open imbalances. Uh, and what, what this ended up was is a very boring game where somebody 2200 and up decided that they were going to try to use their knowledge of chess and their ability to just play an even middle game and win. So we're going to show you how this came out and the, the real takeaway from this game, and I'll turn on the engine, is the value of an open file. This game has a lot of mistakes in it in terms of, you know, not egregious, horrible, blunder type mistakes. So here we are, we're going to offer the pawn. And of course, um, the computer says e5 gives black total equality, a move I hate, and uh, I face many times. So we're just playing standard moves now and getting a small advantage. That there's an unusual move. The idea behind that move is to basically develop my knight to f3 instead of e2. And so, what's the idea behind that move? Well, it, I should just take it because it's covered a bunch of times. Now I do take it. It says I should have a significant advantage. It's going to be very hard for him to get it back, and yet he's going to try. So, that's probably the wrong way to cover it, but the computer didn't consider it, but now says it's okay. So that's the history of the computer. So knight to d5 is what the computer says to move. Now I retreat. And so now he can get that pawn with his queen, which is fine with me. And instead of moving queen to e2, we're just doing general good moves that develop. Now this is where I go a little bit astray, because I was a little bit chicken to play c4. Um, and I probably shouldn't have been, because now's the time after that knight moves then the f4 pawn isn't threatened anymore. So now it says he can just take the pawn and get equality. Once again I'm doing whatever I can to create imbalances. If he takes the pawn, fine. Um, you know, I've got things lined up in the king file. f5 is coming. That's why the computer's recommending f5 as a move here. Now I'm on c4 again, which I do play finally. Now we have a, a you know, significant advantage here. We're, we're a full one up. And the question is, how are we going to develop it? And bishop to c3 was probably the right way, but um, the computer likes this just fine. Now it suggests castling, and now I can get a huge advantage with knight takes d4, which I didn't do for some reason. And in retrospect, um, it's pretty obvious that knight to d4, you know, the queen can't do anything because I have bishop to c3. So instead I go there, tempting him to go to b3, he takes, and I take back. Now he plays, knight takes. I still have an advantage. Now it says the echo moves work to c1. I move it to d1. For some reason, open files appeal to me. And now it's equality. So, it's because he can play simply bishop to d7, which he doesn't do. Quality is now lost. Now we go into an end game, and this is the kind of thing that I don't like. This is just dreadful, boring chess. Now that's a kind of a lame attempt at creating some tension, and it loses actually all my advantage. If you notice before this, I was half a pawn up, now I'm like slightly down, maybe even. Because he's got levers like a5. So he castles. And now I still fail to take advantage of that pressure on the B-file. 
However, now, if we assess the position correctly here, and we look at this, both sides have two bishops. Black's rooks are not very good. You know, neither rook is doing much. Um, he's trying to develop his a-rook via um, opening files, so he might actually be able to do that. However, his bishop is somewhat dreadful, especially if I can pressure b7. So, I would say that the computer's assessment of being up a third is a little conservative here. Computer wants me just to take that pawn. You have doubled eight pawns, which I do not do. So now we're up uh, about half, okay? And he's obligated to exchange to develop his rook. And now is a very critical point in time. He needs to do something to activate that rook, and, and you know possibly what the computer suggests is attacking the b pawn. So. Um, instead he pins. So there is a difference here and and this is where the game is basically lost for black in my opinion. What he's got is he's got this dreadful bishop on, on d7. That is a bad bishop because of the pawn on b7 and the pawn on e6. And all he's got is bishop to d7 to c6 to cover that pawn. And what we have is the ability to completely take over an open file. And we're going to get the one big open file on the board, which is the A file right now. And the computer absolutely says he has to move rook to C3 and try to do something to activate, and now he doesn't, and now the game is, as you notice, it went from being 1-up to 2-up. So he's going to make all the best moves here, pretty much. I'm, I'm not. B5 is the most accurate move. Bishop to B6. And now it says I should just move B5 and you know, computers are really good at calculating. Um, instead, I protect my pawn. However, I'm still up over one. So, also, b5 can't be stopped. So, we'll see what he does. He had rook to b8, which would have held out. Held out somewhat. Now the game's over. As you see, this is an easy example of how games are won and lost at higher levels. He just made, you know, look, we have even pawns, right? Except I have the open file. And I have a potential pass pawn on the queen side that's going to win the game. In a completely even position, I have all the space, all the files, and the computer says I'm up 3.7. There's nothing he can do, so we'll just show you the rest of the game. It isn't completely precise, but it does the job. So C7 right now would work. Oh, it, uh, that's what I play. Okay, so. And now, simply rook to a3 is the simplest way to win because um, his rook's in a bad position. It can't retreat to the first rank or his first rank. So I'm able to actually protect from behind, and instead I choose to move my king up. This just requires the slightest bit of caution. Now I have a place to hide on e8, and then I queen the pawn and the game's over, he resigns. So this was more the less an example of, okay, they can decline it and get an even game. But what I wanted to show you was how easily the game slips away because of the bad bishop on d7 and the open file that you can take over on the a file. Basically, it went from an even game to an overwhelming advantage in one or two moves, really one move. So that's the end of our example today.